The words Britannia rules the waves may no longer strictly ring true, but for centuries the British Royal Navy was the most formidable and feared navy on the planet, often dominating the high seas and rarely defeated in battle. The history of the United Kingdom is the history of the Royal Navy. The UK is an island nation and sea has always been a vital factor to its successes. It is the means of people arriving from overseas, a barrier to invaders, a highway for trade and the basis for a once global empire. With such a storied history, we wanted to examine some of the great naval victories Britain has had. I'm Dave. And I'm Josh of Nerd and Dragon, and today we look at 10 of Britain's great naval victories. The Battle of Sloys, 24th of June, 1340. In June 1340, a large English fleet led by King Edward III set sail across the English Channel to assert his claim to the French throne. In opposition to him, a French fleet was anchored in the inlet of Sloys in Flanders. Prepared for battle, the anchored French ships were in a defensive position, lashed together with cables in order to form a floating platform from which to fight. In response, the English positioned their ships, filled with knights and swordsmen between two ships of longbow wielding archers. The battle commenced at noon and raged all day and into the night. The English got the better of the battle due to the fact that their ships were free to attack the anchored French fleet as and when required, and because the British archers with their longbows could produce more rapid and accurate rate of fire compared to the opposing crossbowmen of the French fleet. Both French commanders were killed in battle and the French lost 170 of their 190 ships. In comparison, the British lost just two ships out of the 210 that began the battle. The Defeat of the Spanish Armada, July 1588 In the late 16th century, Spain had the most powerful empire in the known world. Spanish King Philip II was Catholic and England was a Protestant nation and relations between the two were rocky at best. When Queen Elizabeth I had Catholic Mary Queen of Scots executed in 1587, Philip was enraged and planned his attack on England. Philip's plan was to send an armada of 130 ships to the Netherlands, pick up 30,000 Spanish troops stationed there and invade England, adding it to his empire. However, the armada was delayed due to Sir Francis Drake commanding an English assault on the Spanish ships while at anchor at Cadiz. More than a hundred ships were destroyed and a lot of Spanish treasure was stolen. The ill-fated armada finally set sail in 1588. Disaster first struck when the English scattered the Spanish fleet with fire ships while at anchor at Calais. The English navy then attacked the armada at the Battle of Gravelines. This forced the armada to flee and abandoned the attempt of invasion. During its retreat, the armada was caught in a bad storm and many ships and men were lost. In the end, just 67 ships and less than 10,000 men survived to return to Spain. The Battle of Barfleur, 29th of May to the 14th of June, 1692. When the Protestant Dutch Prince William seized the English throne and sent James II into exile, the French King Louis XIV prepared an invasion to restore James's crown. Louis XIV's fleet was met in the Channel by an allied Anglo-Dutch force that far outnumbered them. The French were beaten and though no ships were lost in battle, the crippled French vessels were driven ashore and burned by English seamen. The French fought desperately to defend their ships and the hand-to-hand -hand combat that ensued in the shallow waters was ferocious and brutal. Ultimately, 15 men of war, some of the largest and magnificent ships ever built, were destroyed along with the plans to restore James to the throne. The Battle of Quiberon Bay, 20th of November, 1759. Fought during the Seven Years' War between the Royal Navy and its favourite enemy France, the Battle of Quiberon Bay was the most decisive naval encounter of the war and it lasted just three hours. The French fleet had been blockaded by the British at Brest but had managed to break out during a storm. The Royal Navy pursued the French ships and upon finding them sheltering in Quiberon Bay on the west coast of Brittany launched an attack. In the battle that followed, the French lost seven ships of the line and had more than 2,500 men killed. The Royal Navy lost two ships and 400 men, and Britain's victory capped what was the decisive year of the war. The Glorious 1st of June, 1794 
June the 1st, 1794, marked the first major sea battle of the latest series of wars with France, which could run until after the defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte in 1815. The French intended to invade Britain and the Royal Navy was tasked to defend its homeland. In a relatively evenly matched but very disorganised battle, the Royal Navy came out on top, sinking one French ship of the line, capturing six others, inflicting more than 4,000 casualties and taking 3,000 prisoners. In contrast, the Royal Navy suffered 1,200 casualties, killed or wounded in the battle without losing any ships. On the 1st of June 1794, France's navy suffered its worst losses since the Battle of La Hogue 102 years earlier. Also, at the hands of the Royal Navy, I would not again contest British dominance in northern European waters. The Battle of the Nile, 1st to the 3rd of August, 1798. Napoleon Bonaparte wanted to conquer Egypt, and the British were determined to stop him from doing so. This in turn led to the Battle of the Nile. Tasked with the pursuit of the French fleet, Admiral Horatio Nelson found them at anchor in Abuka Bay, close to the entrance of the River Nile. The French Vice Admiral had neglected to properly set adequate defences for the anchored ships, with only the guns on one side being ready for action if required. This left the French vulnerable. Seizing his opportunity, Nelson sailed between the anchored French ships and the land, opened fire from both sides. What ensued could be better described as an annihilation rather than a battle. The French suffered 3,000 casualties and lost 13 ships. The British suffered a mere 218 casualties with no ships lost. From this moment on, the Royal Navy reigned supreme over the French forces in the Mediterranean. The Battle of Trafalgar 21st October 1805 One of the most infamous and celebrated naval battles of all time and a battle with landmarks named after it. The Royal Navy's victory at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805 put to rest any threat of French invasion of Britain. Admiral Nelson, aboard his flagship, the aptly named HMS Victory, intercepted the Allied French-Spanish fleet coming off anchor from Cadiz at the Cape of Trafalgar. In the ensuing battle, Nelson cut through the Allied ships in two places, allowing superior British gunnery crews and better trained, disciplined seamen to overwhelm and defeat the coalition forces. The combined French-Spanish navies lost 22 ships of the line, suffered 7,000 casualties and had 8,000 men taken prisoner. The British suffered 1,600 casualties with no ships lost. The only sour note to the British victory was the falling in the Battle of Admiral Nelson. His death in the battle gained him even more of a heroic status than he had held previously, honoured with the state funeral at St Paul's Cathedral. Monuments, streets, public houses and various other landmarks have been named after and in honour of Nelson and his heroic leadership. The Battle of Jutland, 31st of May to the 1st of June 1916. The largest naval engagement of the Great War saw 151 ships of the Royal Navy face 99 ships of the German High Seas Fleet. The scale of the Battle of Jutland is extraordinary, as was the devastation and destruction. More than 6,000 British soldiers perished, 14 British ships were sunk, one of their commanders, Rear Admiral Horace Hood, was killed in action. Despite these losses and inflicted around half that number on the Germans, the British emerged victorious. With only six of the German ships undamaged, the High Seas Fleet was forced to return to port, and for the rest of the war, German's naval warfare was focused solely on their U-boat threat. The Battle of Toronto, the 11th to the 12th of November, 1940. The Battle of Toronto was the first successful attack by aircraft on a fleet in harbour and changed how naval warfare would be fought from that point on. After destroying the French fleet, at Merles El Kabir, to prevent it from falling into German hands, the Italian Navy was Britain's next target. At 9pm in the evening of the 11th of November 1940, aircraft of the Fleet Air Arm of the Royal Navy began an attack on the Italian ships moored at Mar Grande Harbour at Toronto, killing 59, wounding 600, damaging half a dozen ships and destroying two others at the cost of just two lives and two aircrafts. The Italians had lost half its capital ships in one night 
and the British cemented themselves as the greatest maritime power in the Mediterranean and the Allies would maintain this dominance for the duration of the war. The Battle of Taranto inspired Japanese Admiral Isuroku Yamamoto who mimicked the British attack on the Italian ships when he led his forces at Pearl Harbor the following year. The Sinking of the Bismarck, 27th of May 1941 in February 1939, the German Navy launched the 823-foot Bismarck at Hamburg. Nazi leaders hoped that the state-of-the-art battleship would herald the rebirth of Germany's surface battle fleet. However, with the Royal Navy closely guarding routes from Germany to the Atlantic Ocean, only Nazi U-boats were able to move around freely. Eventually, in May 1941, the Bismarck was ordered out into the Atlantic to wreak havoc on Allied convoys. Upon hearing of the Bismarck's deployment, Britain sent the entire home fleet out in pursuit. On the 24th of May, the British ships HMS Hood and HMS Prince of Wales intercepted the Bismarck near Iceland and battle commenced. In the fighting, HMS Hood exploded with the loss of all but three of her crew. The Bismarck escaped but had suffered damage at the hands of HMS Prince of Wales. Leaking fuel, it fled for the safety of Nazi-occupied France. On May 26th, the Bismarck was spotted and attacked by British aircraft, crippling her. And on May 27th, several British warships, including HMS King George V and HMS Rodney, descended on the stricken vessel and bombarded it with torpedoes and shells, inflicting heavy damage. By mid-morning, the pride of the German Navy had become nothing but a floating wreck and was soon sent to the bottom of the ocean. Of a 2,221 crew, just 115 survived. Whilst the sinking of the Bismarck had no real significant impact on naval warfare in World War II, given that Germany's surface battle fleet was severely inferior, it was a severe moral and psychological blow for a country and regime that were already losing the war and a huge boost to the Allies, knowing that they had just destroyed Hitler's great warship. Josh here. We really hope you enjoyed the video. This one was personal for Dave as his grandfather served in the Royal Navy, so I know it would have meant a lot to him researching and recording this video. So thank you for sticking with us till the end. Liking and subscribing really helps us out. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>